welcome to the vlog. It's gonna be a exciting and very busy day today. I'm gonna to start by just taking a look at these python eggs that we cut the other day. A few heads are poking out right now. This is actually a pastel lesser right here looking absolutely beautiful. Look at that little monkey right there sticking his head out right here. I absolutely love when babies are hatching. We actually have four tours today. I have a bunch of work I have to get done. I think I have a kluber clutch, some ball python clutches, all kinds of things. Oh, look at these guys right here. Ooh, all these heads are sticking out. They're all doing really well. These guys should probably climb out of the egg tomorrow, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna be here tomorrow because that's the other crazy thing is we have to open up the Reptarium today, and then after that, I have to drive seven or eight hours to the Wisconsin Dell. We're gonna go visit a zoo, I think feed rhinos and a bunch of other baby animals, and then we're going to Alligator Alley, the reptile zoo that inspired me to do a lot of things too. So regardless, absolutely incredible that we're starting the day seeing little baby heads poking out. Let's get to work because it's gonna be a crazy one. And down in the dungeon before my first tour, we have two ball python clutches today. I'm actually gonna collect one. One girl is still laying, so we'll come back to her in a little bit. Regardless, this is a relatively mundane clutch. And what I mean by that is nothing super exciting, just a really pretty kind of harlequin tech. Whoa, what's up, mama? Whew. Cause she's not in a good mood. Should be pretty fun to try to get her off her eggs. It's okay, mom. That's all right. Oh, whoa. All right, mom. I'm going to try to get you off. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. It's okay. It's okay. Whoa. Come on. Come on, mom. Come on, mom. Oh, whoa. She is protecting her eggs really good, like a good mom should. All right, I'm going to set her right aside here. Looks like she doesn't have a really big clutch, but again, she's a normal kind of harlequin animal, and oh, doggy. I tell you, she is fired up, and she's just bred to a banana, so we like to produce a lot of bananas because they are great entry-level snake. So <laughs> Let's get these eggs and see if we can get them without getting bitten for sure because she is definitely fired up Okay, mama. Okay, mama. It's all right. All right. We'll get these guys out of here again I'll go ahead and get her cleaned up get her set back in it looks like we have five beautiful eggs here again These should just be half normals maybe with that little bit of harlequin kind of cool patterning and then of course banana stuff So not too bad. We'll let that other girl go ahead and lay the rest of her clutch We'll go over do this tour really quick in between tours because we have four of them today I'm gonna to come back grab that clutch grab a clubber clutch and uh, whatever else we need to do before we hit the road for the Dells, Wisconsin Okay over here at the rep I'm just waiting on my first tour. Uh, it's supposed to have started about five minutes ago. You know, and honestly, guys, usually if someone shows up five or 10 or even 15 minutes late, I've even been known to do it at 30 minutes late. I'll just push it and say, hey, we've got plenty of time. We'll just go ahead and give you an extra 15 minutes or half hour. Today, we're scheduled every single hour. So unfortunately, I hope they show up soon because I can't extend their tour because 55 minutes from now, I've got another tour. So uh, fingers crossed they show up because I've only had one time where someone hasn't showed up for a door. So uh, fingers crossed they'll get here anytime we'll have a good time and get these tours started and everyone showed up how are you guys thank you so good. much for coming it's awesome where'd you say you're from charlotte north carolina oh my gosh well thank you guys for coming seriously uh let's have some fun we'll see a bunch of animals anything in particular you guys want to see um uh, i want a whole casper in oh, which one the white one. Oh, casper yes oh casper <laughs> yeah you let it go casper you got it after we'll do it Coming, guys, all right? Yes, thank, thank you, you guys. Be good. Enjoy right. the beautiful day, all right? All right. All right thanks, guys. <laughs> My next door is here. How you guys doing? Good. Where are you guys from? Barlow. Oh, Chicagoland area. Chicagoland area. We're going to be there later tonight, as a matter of fact. I'm heading to Chicagoland area, actually up to the Dells. But let's have a good time together, okay? Yes. All right, guys. Hey. Although it's a super busy day with tours and all the other stuff and we're traveling later, I still scheduled in that I would go in and spend some time with RJ. When you're doing training with things like crocodiles or even monitors, it's about consistency. And I wanna get in and spend some time with him before I head on the road. So let's go ahead and get in there, check it out, and just have a good time with RJ. And I'll show you a little bit of my techniques as far as like how I kinda habituate him to constantly being handled by me and keeping him so tame, just like I'm trying to do with salt and pepper. Come on, RJ. But you can see, as soon as I come in, he's going to kind of submit, right? Because he understands that I'm his dominant. And I tell you what, he's a strong animal. Oh, and he's a beauty, too. But getting in the water with something like this is such a different experience than even having him out, right? And I'll be totally honest with you, I've been thinking about... Like, how can I have an experience where other people can come in with animals like RJ? And one of my kind of crazy ideas is to eventually maybe have a big pond where people can come in and have this experience with them. And again, what I'll do is I'll just continue to kind of move them around, 
play with them and stuff like that. Make sure that he understands that I can always get in with them because as it gets bigger, it's going to just be more and more difficult for me to actually get in with them if he doesn't know that I'm his dominant, right? So I'll just kind of take him out. I'll play with him a little bit. Make him completely understand that it's going to be okay for me to do this. And I got to be honest with you guys, it is one of the coolest experiences in the world. Again, it's one thing when he's out and you're kind of handling him, but I love getting in his pond and being kind of in his territory, right? And it's so important for him to understand that even though this is his pond, he has to realize that I can come in here with him and do whatever I want to do with him, whether it's touch his mouth, pick him up, just spend time with them. This is what you have to do. And even though today is a busy day and I'm kind of going crazy, we got a long trip ahead of us that I'm super excited about, by the way. But nevertheless, I still wanted to take the time to spend time with my guy, RJ, here. What an amazing animal. And I certainly don't want to bore you guys with more children's pythons, but I think it's kind of cool. Again, you can really see the polymorphism in here. I think we have one or two more children's python clutches to hatch. These just came out this morning. The one thing I thought would be interesting to talk about is see how they're all huddled together. Well, with the exception of this little monkey over here. Basically, in the wild, these guys are going to hatch out. And in that next, they're probably going to hang out for the first couple days together. You know, every now and then, a brazen one is going to climb away like this little dude right here. But for the most part, they're probably going to stay together for that couple days, probably till they shed. And then they're going to eventually wander off. Depends on the type of snake. You know, some snakes will stay together for a long time. Other snakes, as soon as they hatch, they crawl away. But when it comes to children's pythons, and most pythons, even ball pythons, Burmese pythons, reticulated pythons, when they hatch, they seem to kind of clump together. And that's why when you open up an egg box like this, they could be everywhere, but they all are clumped together. So I just thought that was a cool little tidbit I'd share with you guys. It's been a while since I fed the frogs for you guys. You know, I used to do it almost every day. It was kind of my thing. I still do it, but I figure I'll go ahead and feed my little poison dart frogs. I love these guys. And remember, we've got frog eggs from the mossy frogs. They should be hatching in about eight or nine days. So excited about that. a couple Kluber clutches that we can pull really quick. We're going to start with this head albino Nelson's milk snake. Look at how gorgeous those snakes are right there. I'm going to pull this box out and just see what she's got going on. Make sure mama's okay. She is gorgeous. And again, that's a het albino carrying the tray for albinism. She's bred to an albino. I'll show you the male really quick that she's bred to, which is this beautiful dad right here. Absolutely gorgeous. So half the babies on average are going to look like dad and half the babies on average are going to look like mom. Again, on average. So we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, let's take a look and see what kind of eggs that she actually laid. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. That took me off guard because normally it's like six or seven eggs. I tell you, that is a good clutch of eggs. That may be one of the biggest clutches I've had with Nelson's milk snakes. That's two, four, six, eight, ten eggs. Who doggy, ten eggs. So again, on average, five will be albino, five will be head. But we could get ten albinos, we could get ten heads because it is on average. Regardless, that is a beautiful way to start off collecting clubber eggs. One more clutch. And I think this one didn't have a next box in it, so let's hope the eggs are okay. And again, what happens is a lot of times when we're in second clutches, we may miss a shed to put a nest box in. It's a lot harder to see when a female is gravid. You can see some eggs are a little desiccated out for sure. So we'll have to just put some moss on there to kind of plump them up. But this is again a second clutch. It is a snow that's het for scaleless. And it was actually bred to this animal here which is a snow scaleless corn snake. So again half the clutch should be snow scaleless. The other half will be snows. Regardless absolutely incredible. Doesn't look like a lot of eggs. There's enough eggs that hey it's still going to be really cool. Again I've talked about it a lot in the past that second clutch is our as big as first clutches and sometimes fertility is a problem in the second clutches too so let's see what we have we have two four five good eggs we have one two three four five bad eggs which is pretty typical for second clutches again what happens is that as you go through the year those males that need that fertile sperm that starts to warm up and the sperm starts to die off and then fertility issues happen also females can retain sperm and sometimes just not have enough to fertilize the whole clutch regardless five good eggs mama you did really good and that wraps up colubrid clutches for the day All right, coming back to check on that ball python clutch in between tours and all that type of stuff. See if she is done. Oh yeah, definitely looks like she is just done. Oop, and it looks like this mama isn't happy either. I tell you what, today the mama snakes aren't happy at all. Come on, mom, you're okay. 
Yeah, all right, I'm just gonna try to get you off these eggs. Oh, come on now. It's okay, mama. It's all right. I'm gonna pull you up right here. All right, looks like she's got a good clutch. There are a couple little sluggers in there, but that's not too bad. And this is actually a pinstripe that is bred to a dragonfly, which is a pastel fire pinstripe. So it looks like a bunch of good eggs. One, two little sluggers there, and we'll get the rest of these eggs out. We'll probably have to candle them. Because I kind of interrupted her, she might have rolled stuff around a little bit. I'm just glad that she passed her entire clutch of eggs. Looks really good, is an egg bound. Mama, you look absolutely incredible. I'm sorry that I'm stealing your clutch of eggs. And a few people had asked, me like are you gonna do another maternal incubation clutch and remember last year we actually left a clutch of eggs with the female mom I think there were seven eggs only two eggs made it term they both hatched out they were both kinked and didn't work out and that's the best we could do that's not to say maternal incubating clutches don't work out I'm just saying it didn't work out well for us I mean we had terrible hatch plus the female had to stay in a clutch of eggs for two months so she wasn't feeding and conditioning for next year so we weren't even able to breed her this year so the answer is I'm gonna always take the clutches away because I have a better hatch rate with these clutches in an artificial incubation and I can get mama cleaned up get her back onto food and get her conditioned so hopefully she'll breed again next year back to the clutch we've got two four six eight good eggs so that is pretty good couple bad eggs but still an absolutely awesome day of collecting python eggs I think my Bella knows what's coming <laughs> Bella you want a banana you want a banana sweetie over here over here Bella Bella come on girl come on that's my girl. <laughs> she loves her bananas. That's a girl. That's a girl, sweetie. Oh my God, I absolutely love it. You know, I don't ever get sick of this. I hope that you guys don't get sick of seeing me feed Bella. But you know what's happened is this week we didn't give her any like treat bananas. So she is definitely excited about a little banana action, if you know what I mean. She is so cute. But usually she'll take like three bites and then she's done. Do you want any more, girl, or you're done? Yep. She's definitely pretty predictable. Like I said, typically she wants three bites of a banana and then she turns her head. She's so stuck up. She really is. Thank you, Bella. Oh, and now she's going by. I tell you what, Bella runs things around here. She's the queen of the reptarium. Last tour of the day before we open for the reptariums here. And believe it or not, these guys came from where the reptarium was built, Garland, Texas. So thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you. We're gonna have a great time. Let's jump in, right? All right, let's go. Thank you guys, you are amazing for I appreciate you're gonna hang out with us, right? So, Absolutely. you there? Uh, we're about to open up for the Reptarium. You guys ready? Ready, ready, ready? Okay, let's do this. Hey guys, come on in, come on in. Hi, how are you? Okay, having fun at the Reptarium, but I've gotta get on the road. We have an eight hour drive ahead of us tonight. Hopefully we'll end up in the Dells, Wisconsin tonight or as close as possible, because tomorrow morning we actually are going to an awesome zoo and doing some crazy things. I cannot wait to share that with you, but for now, gotta pack up and get on the road. We're about two hours into the drive right now. I've got my friends from KB Reptiles with me. Of course, we've got Maria in the back over here. Uh, what's your name again? Jay something, I can't remember. <laughs> Regardless, we have a long way to go. We're gonna try to get as close to the Dells, Wisconsin as we possibly can get a little bit of sleep tonight get up super early and then go have some fun the truth is I'm not even hundred percent sure what we're doing there I think it has something to do with uh, I don't know some baby animals that we can bottle feed rhinos that we feed. I I'm not sure it's gonna be an amazing adventure and who else wouldn't drive eight hours to go have fun even if you don't know what you're doing right Right. Yeah, perfect. Okay, good. All right, good. All right, so uh, we'll we're stop. We're in good hands. We're, yeah, this is gonna it's gonna work out good. And we have finally reached our destination, actually about an hour outside the Dells, Wisconsin. We will be heading out there first thing tomorrow morning, having an absolutely amazing day. We're gonna, again, hit the zoo tomorrow, and then we're gonna hit Alligator Alley, which is a reptile zoo, gonna be absolutely incredible. I hope that you guys have an amazing day. Hope you like this journey, and it has just begun. Be kind to someone today, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.